Today we're going to talk about ICE, which is a framework built on React by China and it's like Next.js but built by Chinese. And I have to obviously turn on my Google Translate here because I don't know Chinese. So I want to experiment with this, what this framework is exactly and how it is different from Next.js in general and how does it look like. It looks like a pretty solid choice because you have a lot of primitive constructs and primitive things at least available in this framework right out of the box. So if you go to the about section of this framework first of all you will see that it's a front-end solution built on react it provides basic capabilities such as application construction routing debugging micro front-end and integration capabilities based on the application development framework it has typescript webpack 5 css modules ssr all in one solution like how next next.js also works it has ssr and ssg it has routing solutions state management data request all of that is i'm assuming that it, it's built in then there are i'm assuming like i i js3 version 3 is the latest one which is available which we'll try now then there is something known as feebang suitable for experienced front-end developers i'm not exactly sure what feebang is ie.work yeah google is 100 percent not helping here or searching in Chinese programming stuff. I'm assuming this is some sort of library or something built on top of ICE, but I don't know. Anyway, let's start with this. Let's try to take a look at what this is exactly. So you can see that you have to run the create ICE ICE app command, and then you have to just follow along. So let me run create ICE command. And as it says that it should give me a prompt, which it did. So we have to select a template. So it's asking me web light and D light. Fusion Pro and mini app. So let's try with mini app. I have no idea what this, this is like an uncharted territory. The documentation is in Chinese. There are weird heading effects, <laughs> which I've never seen in a documentation before and comments are in Chinese. So let's see. All right. So now once this is installed, we have to CD into the ice app folder, run npm install and then npm start. So this is the structure of the project. Let's try to dig in while npm install is running. Let's try to understand what's going on here. So um, it has an ice runtime and then an ice mini app runtime, then react and react on. And then, then it has something known as app lint. These are the things I've never really heard about. So let's just take a look at what app lint is exactly. This is also something, uh, a Chinese project I'm assuming, and I need to translate over here so it is easier to integrate ESLint supports TypeScript and ICE so I'm assuming that AppLint sort of makes it easy for you to use ESLint with ICE as a framework okay interesting then we have ICE app as a dependency okay so it has split ICE into runtime which is I'm assuming only the files which are required at runtime and then the actual app then you have a plugin mini app then you have react types eslint style lint and typescript i've never really heard about style lint also what what style lint is exactly hmm apparently it's not a small package it's like 5 million downloads a week yeah probably because mostly we use tailwind in which this is probably not required but anyway okay the setup looks familiar enough other than package you have style lint file you have git ignore you have eslint files and you have browsers list rc you have ts config also this is slightly using slightly older syntax of typescript i'm assuming but anyway should not be a problem as such if we look at the structure of the program we have a few pages assets i'm assuming would be served directly from the assets folder from the you know from the url and now if we go ahead and run npm start over here it should hopefully not just blow up my computer it should just start something on the browser okay we have a nice home page and a thumbs up something i've never seen <laughs> before as a boilerplate template for a framework but interesting to see so it says me hello i3 and then a thumbs up counter and that's all interesting so what's going on here let's go back to the documentation let's try to study the dri directory structure and uh, i'm pretty sure like google translate is messing up with the website so we'll have to make sense of things in a way so anyway it's telling us that there are package.json file which is obviously which we know there is ice.config.mts file which is the build configuration so this is the file which defines build configuration 
sort of look like looks like wheat but i'm not exactly sure what they use yeah so they they use webpack right that's what we read earlier so that that should be fine then they are using dot env files and then ts config then you have a mock folder a public folder and an src folder for source code and within the src app.ts is the entry file of the project used to perform go global runtime configuration of the application including routing providers application entry for details so if you look at this you're going to see that this sort of this file over here which we have this app.ts this looks like the entry file or i'm assuming it's like a setup file not exactly like the entry file it's a setup file hmm. so you can also store components in a different folder so they are like giving you a structure basically to start off with i'm assuming that the routing is done again just like we have next year so it's done with a page level format and in the routing itself there is a something known as a view as a concept right i'm assuming that this is not the view of svg so svg also has that so it's picking up the wrong types i'm assuming but this is interesting because this does not look like html right so this view and text these are not valid html tags but they still exist they are valid in svg so they are getting picked up from that but if you look at the actual application which we have over here here okay so they are actually using view tag directly but then i'm assuming that they are registering these custom elements by themselves so looking at the routing you can see that it would base it would be based on the pages the information you create so just like next.js you will have index.tsx as root route and then so on and so forth for some reason i'm not able to understand what this mini program says this is also something which we used right so i don't know what mini programs is in Okay, this is something related to WeChat. What exactly is this? So WeChat mini programs are sub applications within the WeChat ecosystem. They enable to provide advanced features to users such as e-commerce, virtual store, task management, coupons and other services. Okay, I don't know a lot about WeChat, but I do know like it's sort of like a super app in China. So it has like you can do a lot of things, but I'm assuming that it's it allows you to like sort of arbitrary run any website or something within the WeChat application. Uh, local governments have leveraged mini programs to control the spread of pandemic, real time health QR, record PCR requests, register vaccination and so on. Yeah, so, okay, I understood. It's sort of like creating an app within WeChat. So that is what ICE also allows you to do. And that is what I think I created by mistake by default mini app right i thought it's like a mini app in general like a small app but it's something else so for mini apps the conventional routing will cause problem of being not able to determine the home page in native mini apps the first item in app json is designated as the home page therefore when developing for mini apps with ice.js users need to specify so some sort of edge case with mini apps uh, you can cover if you are you know doing things in china but generally routing works pretty much like how it, you would expect it as a file based routing then you have something else also where in pages directory you can create a special type of component to maintain the global group of pages in the shared route the file convention is layout.js or tsx and it works sort of like how app router works so they have mixed a little bit of pages router and app router in next.js and in remix also so so yeah I mean, I don't know, like, uh, they're probably trying to build the best of both worlds, right? Pages router and app router. So they are following the conventions of app router alongside pages router. Interesting. Then inside of pages, they have a data loader and a page config, which looks very similar to remix. It's not, I'm, I think it's more suitable to call this as a remix China version instead of Next.js because this data loader immediately reminded me of that. Then you have page config, Again, something which Next.js app router includes and Remix also includes, I think. It allows you to define like the metadata and all of that, which you can do. And then there is obviously a some section for mini program because obviously they have they have a little bit of focus on Chinese WeChat app also. Then styling, I'm assuming is, you know, you should be able to install Tailwind CSS in a system like this, but they also support CSS modules, which is good. Data loading, as we have already seen, they are using a pattern of you know how remix works and uh, they're saying in traditional coding model, model data requests are generally initiated with the component and relay on the loading parsing and execution of business bundle in ice.js the data loading for page is initiated uniformly by the framework is parallel and non-blocking due to the loading and parsing of the business bundle so i'm assuming that this is like a waterfall graph right which 
what it's basically trying to show, I'm, I don't know, understand what this is exactly, but they're basically trying to show that they're able to load assets and some sort of data parallelly, right? Because by the time they're building or, you know, they are building the project, they are able to extract out what sort of data you want to request for. In ICE, we recommend decoupling pages data request from UI implementation and data loader for defining the pages data request. Again, like pretty much how Remix works or get static props works right in next year. So data loading is also pretty similar to how it works. And this is probably the implementation of get static props. Actually not, I'm not sure like if this is again, they have like brought in some things from app router where every component or every page I'm assuming could have like their own data loaders, nested data loaders. This is not something which is possible with pages router in Next.js at least. And then I'm assuming this is using some variation of suspense over here to load the data. Then you have static resources, pretty standard stuff. You can just put it in a folder, import it and just use it directly. Then we also have SSG at build time, which also uses data loaders and static data loaders. I'm assuming that static data loaders is SSG, like it says, and data loader is something that happens on the runtime, right? So this obviously, this doesn't seem, I'm, doesn't seem like that this is going to SSR because this returns you just the static data and this returns you data on the runtime. I could be wrong. <laughs> We'll have to check this, but I think that is what the pattern looks like. And then you have server-side rendering also. Yeah, so you can see that it passes then if it's client and if it's server. So pretty sure like it's loading it twice. So the initial version which we looked at would have would likely be running on the client directly, but this can also run on server. Then you have custom HTML, the document template, which we have also seen in our own code base over here in the document.tsx. You can see like you start with the bare bones HTML. And then you have something, some script tag, some main tag, which is like, you know, how you would actually do it with ICE. You have built-in support for HTTP which is neat. I think Next.js also has that. Next.js 14 or 15, I think. And then you have build configuration file, which we have also seen because this is using Webpack under the hood. It pretty much would support anything and everything you can imagine. And a few more nice patterns like, you know, you search params. So if you want to just read the search parameters directly, you can use APIs like this. One interesting concept which it has is the JSX plus system, which is a super set or I would say like it's, it's a it's an extension of JSX in general. And it has, you know, once you import JSX plus, you have something like X if and X else. And then you have X for item in data source. And you can, you know, sort of do it in a view like format. I mean, I am not a huge fan of syntax like this. Looking at this just confuses me a little bit. What happens if I insert a span inside this? What would happen? Or a no breaking space? Would this completely crash? Would something happen? But I don't know, like maybe JSX plus is better. We'll have to look into what exactly JSX plus does and how the rules of JSX plus looks like, right? But anyway, something that I supports, one of the things which I know that Next.js does not support. I mean, it's giving a lot of Vue.js vibes, right? So you have these slots now, you have this X dash syntax, you have classes, smart classes and so on, right? So if you generally, if you use something like this, you will have to use CLSX as a package or your own custom implementation. But this is, this is neat depending on what your use case is. But nonetheless, interesting concept. Anyway, if you are not a developer who understands Chinese language, I would probably recommend to still stick to Next.js in general because the documentation is in Chinese and the translate, I mean, it's working, but it's messing up. I'm pretty sure like this is not how the real documentation looks or feels like because there are a lot of hidden elements everywhere. So yeah. So yeah, anyway, that's all for this video. If you like this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. All the links are in the description. Do check it out and I will see you in the next video really soon.